Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Why are we already at war? Let's go ahead and war over this next <clears throat> round. We got the second half of the quarterfinals of the top MCs before 2000. We are finishing it up so that we can turn it over to y'all and start getting our pod squad votes in this coming week. We are finally ready to do this. Hopefully, I don't get cursed out by Pat. But we're going to say <laughs> if y'all have forgot, this is round by round. At the end of this round, all the rounds going forward, the pod squad will get a vote. Uh, via an online bracket that will be released on all of our social media platforms. You click the link, you hit the who you want to win each uh, part of the bracket. You get two votes to our one. So basically, what that can, what that looks like is we can outvote you three to two, or if one of us is voting for somebody and you agree with that person, you essentially tip the scales and automatically make that minority vote a majority vote. So. Your vote is super important, so be looking out for that. And the three criteria we we chose to determine if somebody was an MC and what how we would determine who moves on in each round is as follows. Marketability, how much you are able to sell, how much money you are able to generate, how much uh, your face card, your abilities as an MC have allowed you to generate funds for yourself and others. Um, the next one is stage presence. How much you're able to rock the mic, MC, as they say, and how you deliver your lyrics, like how you present your hip hop in a way that makes people captivated. And then obviously the lyricism. What are you saying? How are you putting the words together? How was your technical skill at putting words together? Are you doing multi-syllabic flows? Are you switching up flow patterns? Are you giving me three different cadences in one song? Are you coming with original concepts? Are you writing your own lyrics, obviously? Um, yeah, and, and is that as a higher level than others? So with that being said, let's go ahead and unveil where we are currently in this bracket. Give it one second. Bong, bong. We'll just do that. Can y'all see that there, my people? I see, I see. Ah, awesome. So I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. All right. So what we got here, folks, is where we are so far. We got, hold up. Let's do this. Am I not allowed to do that on this? This is going to be a hard There it is. All right. So we already got on the, on, on the, on this other side here, we got Eminem and Busta Rhymes. And we got Ghostface killing Nas. And this is the side we are working on tonight. See where we're at. We got some heavy hitters on this side. And um, this could, the winner of this entire thing could come from this side. Like, that's how solid this side is. There's no fucking around over here. So uh, y'all see it on the screen. Where y'all want to start, fellas? Might as well start from the top. Bottom bottom bottom. Uh, all right, let's get right into it. First up, Red Man versus KRS One, the teacher versus Money. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to take it first, or I can for sure jump right on in with this one? I'll let one of y'all go first. Huh? Bet it you up. Go ahead, Ted. Uh, I'll start with lyricism. I'm going to give that to Redman. I believe KRS-One has done more for the entire industry of hip-hop, but when it comes to straight up what you say and how you put words together, KRS-One has not evolved as much, whereas Redman came out of the gate as a very high lyricist, and he's been able to evolve and stay a high lyricist throughout generations. That says a lot with your pen being able to continuously adapt and evolve to what new listeners are looking for. So Red mm-hmm. Man gets lyricism for me. Um, when it comes to marketability, this is the more tough one just because of the longevity of KRS One. He's definitely had a lot of albums. He's toured a lot. He has book sales. He has 
um, speaking engagements. He, 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 he's international for sure. So um, it's tough because you then got Red Man, who, because of his partnership with Method Man and his own merit, um, has also generated a lot of funds, especially off touring. Like his show with Method Man, like everywhere they go, they sell out. So like it's, mm -hmm. it's different. So um, I think what separates this is the longevity. I feel like KRS-One has had more time to span generate generations where kids know him as well as really old people, like our parents and them know KRS-One, whereas some of our parents may not be as familiar with Red Man. You know what I mean? But like everybody know KRS-One. So I'll, I'll go with KRS-One on marketability. And then when it comes to the subject of stage presence, This is probably the closest one because they are both monsters on stage. Like mm -hmm. stage up, you, you're going to get your money's worth, period. I would say I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this to the teacher. Off the mere fact of when he is freestyling in like um, a sway in the morning setting. Or when he's on stage in front of 30,000 people, or when he like he has more ways that he can captivate the crowd. He can go into the freestyle off the, the acapella bag. He can go into his hits bag. He can go into like actually getting live and jumping around on the stage. Like he get, he he'll bring that energy to his show. Um, I, I just feel like he he has more facets to it. Like he can read a poem and captivate fuck out of you with just his delivery like he, he just has one of those presences that just soaks up the energy in the room so i'm gonna give it to krs1 on a slight edge to one but krs1 gets my vote oh i'm sorry you want to take a pick um you can go if you want to faith all right um i start with um stage performance um, as Ted stated, the stage performance is pretty close. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give that to Red Man. Uh, I'm a smoker for a Marion Man show. Um, nothing wrong with a KRS show. It's just that would be a personal opinion. And that's what we're giving. So, yeah, I'll prefer Red Man on the stage. Um, marketability. Um, Due to longevity, KRS has put itself in different, a lot of different avenues. But some of those avenues he's put himself in aren't for money. Therefore, a cause of the culture and a cause that empower Black people. So that's not marketability. Marketability, that's notice, notoriety. So I can't equate that in the same realm if I'm talking about Method Man and his marketability and his range of different things he can make money from. Um, he got the movies. He got the um, cartoon voiceovers. He got... He said Red Man. Yeah, they had that Red Man and Meth cartoon. Oh, okay. Um, it ain't last long, but... Yeah. Um, Red Man got some, a little bit different shit going on. Um, so when it comes to marketability, I gotta look at it differently. So I'm gonna have to come back to that after I talk about lyricism to give it a, a definite decision on marketability because I still gotta ponder on that one. Because he, uh, when looking at KRS, you really gotta look at what realms can he make money from, differ from what realms he can just step in and be able to have an influence in. Um, lyrics. Uh, Method Man, I mean, yeah, Red Man, excuse me, Red Man's in my top five um, of hip hop artists. He's in my top five, but KRS isn't. Um, mm. He is the teacher. He is the teacher, but in the conversation you have with most people, for some reason, you don't find him in the top five of their list. He may be in their top 10, but he's not in their top five off the top of the head. Um, I don't like, like, he got his message and he gets his message out clearly, but his style of presenting his lyrics, I don't get down with. 
it's more boom bappy. Um, boom bap. It's, it's bap. like, it, yeah, if you know, like, um, it's like he didn't transition his style throughout the decades. How he came out, his flow, and his presentation, and stayed consistent. But that's him, and that's what he's known for. But as time changed, sometimes change is good. For me. Not all change is needed, but sometimes those changes that are needed are, are quite overlooked. Um, I feel like the presentation of his lyrics could have changed over the years and gave him a bigger prowess as far as in the culture and as far as conversations mm-hmm. such as these. So um, lyrics, I'm going to give it to Red Man. Um, marketability, I'm going to give that to KRS because his not- his notoriety and his noticeability comes from him being marketable and the things he's done. So him being able to step in different fields comes from what he says and where he's able to say it from. So I, I-, I give him that one. So who did I give it to on stage present? Uh, I think you gave it to Red. Yeah, I think with Red Man. So I'm gonna go Red Man two, two, Red Man two one. Okay, we got a tie here, Pat. Mm. Who you who, who you running with, Muddy Waters? Or- oh, this this one's fun. Uh, this is a tough one because one is one rapper that I like try to study um myself as far as being a better rapper and then one gave me a mic so uh yeah let's see let's go first stage presence i'm gonna give stage presence to karis one i want to give it to red man too because he has the same amount of stage presence but like you said tiz he could do no matter what he do he controls the crowd yeah Anytime he's around, if he's around, he just, he got that presence where if he's around and he wants to say something, people Different. will listen. Yeah. yeah. It's like, he got like, it's like a, you know, a preacher, like a well-known preacher around or a well-known activist or something like that. You know, like, it's like, it's almost like he, you're around and you like Farrakhan is around you or something like that. And like, That's so. Real. That's real. He is he is kind of like the Farrakhan of hip hop, but so I give that to stage presence because I give stage presence to Karis One because th- to be real, that might be Karis One is probably somebody Red Man study himself as far as stage presence, or whatever. From in general, they didn't necessarily they they're in they're kind of in the same age or whatever. Like uh, I would say, Red Man's probably at the tail end of KRS One's age in rap or whatever, and he goes into the you know mid '90s pretty much and onward. But yeah, the ended off stage presence. I'm giving that to KRS One. Uh, let's. I would say lyricism. Lyricism is this is tough or whatever because. KRS One says a lot of real shit or whatever. Not to say that Red Man don't say real shit, but Red Man is way more creative with his cadence, flow, and punchlines and bars or whatever. Like Red Man, how <clears throat> say, Red Man is one of the is the rappers rapper. Like he's the 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 top tier rappers that you think about. They look at Red Man or whatever. Like he, I haven't heard Eminem say, hey, like Red Man is like one of his top five, pretty much. Whatever. So I'm giving lyricism to Red Man. Marketing. Man, you gave me the mic, but I'm giving marketing to Red Man just because. Let's see. Karis one is kind of anti-marketing. Hmm. He's kind of like he's he's kind of anti that that marketing is is kind of like 
persuading and and pushing the society into agreeing that this particular product is worth consuming pretty much okay. krs one's thing is basically telling you hey this is just some people telling you that this is good for you it may not actually be good for you, whatever like he's he's like he's he's that he's anti-establishment or whatever so in that realm or whatever it still might be things where there's like charities involved and um things where you you're doing like what is that word it's like philanthropy and stuff like that where you you give it back to community but as far as just like making money and making some type of um like some type of push or some type of uh like pushing some type of product or something like that i would give it to red man more one i've seen red man in more commercials <laughs> two i've seen red man in more um pop culture in general he has his own like cult like fan base it's damn near like a like a cheech and chong fan base a fan base that care of uh, that that face partakes in also i can't say that i don't either <laughs> so so i'm giving it to red man okay two one red man moves on the teacher is out of here hey people we told y'all this one's gonna get a little your favorite rapper made me up out of here. Up out of here. Man, and then Red Man's partner's coming in against him. Boom, boom, bam, 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 bam. We got two. Boom, bam, boom, 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 bam, bam. First. Um, I don't even want to do this. this. Yeah, this is Man, this is horrible. <laughs> so it is pretty bad. It is pretty bad. Some somebody that we love is going to party here. Mm-hmm. But I'll kick it off. Um, yeah. Um stage presence met the man. I'm not even gonna argue that. I I I feel like that's pretty clear to in my book. Um when it comes to marketability, I'm going to venture to say since we have one that's no longer able to generate, so I'm not going to go longevity-wise, what I would use is like at their peak, at their individual peaks, how big was this person? How much money were they making? How was album sales? How was, et cetera, touring? How was endorsements, movies, all that? And I'm going to say at, the, at his peak, Tupac may be one of the top three biggest Hip hop artist ever at his peak. Mm -hmm. as as who he was making like this dude was in a film every like every six months. He was and crushing it in the film. So they were like making decent bread. He was like advertising shit. I remember seeing him on St. Ives commercials. I'd be waking up in the mornings on uh, watching my cartoons. St. Ives commercial come on this nigga. Him and Snoop like. Snoop was there. I mean, Tupac was everywhere, bro. So I'm, I'm gonna give marketability to Tupac um, just off of their peaks. Um, I go to lyricism. This one is tough because there's two different type of rappers. You got one that's more of an intricate rapper. Um, you got another one that's more of a straight ahead style of rapper. You also have one that had to evolve with the time and another one that kind of was only around for a certain time. So he never really had to change anything. Um, and then you also have one that's more based off emotion in their rap and what they're saying as opposed to how they're saying it. And then you have another one that's more based on like how they're saying it as opposed to necessarily what they're saying. So it's a very different perspective they're both coming from. But I'm going to say this is more preference for me. And yeah, Tupac is my second favorite rapper ever. So... I'm going to go with Tupac. Um, I feel like part of the lyricism and putting words together is making people 
having words that last the test of time. And I would venture to say pretty bravely that there are more Tupac quotables that the average person can snap to the front of their brain quicker than they would be a Method Man lyric. So sometimes intricacy can go to a detriment of like, they're not memorable past the time that they were spit. And I think when you go bar for bar, I think Tupac has way more classic lyric moments. Um, so yeah, and sometimes simplicity is key in, in writing. Like sometimes you, it, it's key to say more with less. So Tupac wins two one for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make this quick and simple, man. Tupac Rio. Um, you don't need to even have the conversation in two different realms of MCs. So, God damn. Tupac Rio. Well, Pat, did you well, want to give your perspective for <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Both of these rappers are in my top five. One of these rappers is the reason why I wanted to rap. I'm going to pick that rapper, Method Man. Okay. I'm not going to explain shit. <laughs> Method Man's always been a, my favorite rapper. He, at least he didn't get dirty 30 because we've had a lot of 30s in this bracket since the beginning. So at least he didn't mm -hmm. get dirty. So I, I'll take that 2 1. Tupac moves on, guys. Next and I really wanted to see Tupac the red Tupac man. For... Yeah, we're going to have that would have against Method Man's brother. That would have been a crazy battle if it was Method Man versus Red Man. That would that would have been one for the ages. I ain't gonna even front. Yeah, I won't. I don't even think if I can figure that one out. But yeah, let me uh, let me um say even more that yeah, Method Man's my favorite rapper. Tupac is one of my favorite rappers. I don't even care because I knew that y'all were gonna pick Tupac anyway, and I feel like I would be disloyal if I didn't pick Method Man. Because the reason why I wanted to rap anyway. Matter of fact, he's like the main rapper I ever want to meet. I can totally respect it, bro. I'm not mad at mm -hmm. you. Rap mm -hmm. when, you, when you pick your horse, stick with your pick. Mm -hmm. And now we have the next round. Common. Common sense. Versus Scarface. Never met a man to cry till I seen a man die. Anybody um, want the floor first? Um, I'll go first. I just do my personal preference, man. I really don't fuck with comment too too much because um his presentation is same to me over and over. Don't, don't get me twisted. Very talented MC, lyrically gifted, um, different realms of marketability. Um Stage show, not all there for me. Um, but Scarface is like, like I said, I'm, I love a Southern MC, man. I, I grew up on Southern hip hop. So, man, I'm more biased to Southern. I'm lyrical in this competition. I'm going to give it to Scarface. Um, marketability, I will have to give it to a common. Stage presence, stage show, I'm going to give it to Scarface. Um, Scarface 2 1 for me. Okay. Man, this one is tough um, because I'm kind of bound by our metrics. Um, when, when we set up the criteria, I, I, I fear the moments like this. When it comes to lyricism, I give it to Scarface all day. I don't think it's even close lyrically. Um, I definitely think Common has used his lyricism in a wider range. So he's definitely shown more versatility, versatility in his lyricism. But as far as the actual skill of putting pen to paper and coming up with a, a, a wonderful way to, to say something, Scarface is, a, is one of them dudes when it comes to that in hip hop. Like he's a lot of our favorite rappers, favorite rapper. So like he's one of them. So I'm not even going to question his lyric. Scarface all day on the lyricism. Um, when it comes to the stage show, I got to give it to Common, though. 
Um, I fi- I've been to a common show and seen him live. I've seen videos of Scarface, um, but by himself, I haven't seen him like really command that presence. Like he's commanding on his on the on the track, but his presence in person, like watching him and stuff, is not there to me. So I, I would give that to Common actually. And then marketability. And this is where it kills me because the metrics kill me. Because if it was just lyricism, Scarface would win hands down. And I, I couldn't even question it. But when it comes to marketability, Common is one of the most marketable rappers we've seen in the wild. Like from movies to Oscar winning uh, hit records to like the record sales are there, the touring is there. The, like he, he, he checks all of the boxes, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to endorsements, like all of that. So like, he's definitely been more marketable just cause Scarface prefers to keep a low key. So <sighs> with a begrudging heart, a very fucking begrudging heart, I gotta say two, one comment. Had a tad tad. All right. Uh... I'm probably gonna be right there with you. Uh, cause looking at it, first of all, I want to give lyricism to Scarface just cause yeah, it's just not big. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a freestyle from Common not too long ago that that kind of like, all right, I haven't seen this common in a while. Like, you know, you you get that comment sometimes where you just playing around and you say, thick a da, thick a da, da 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 da. You just the the last word is the only word that's rhyming or whatever, but he's saying some extra deep shit or whatever, but it, or whatever, but when he's going off top, but this last freestyle, I think it was on a LA leakers or whatever. I was like, Oh, okay. Um, you might just win up a couple of notches in the bar. Like it wasn't those normal goofy one word, rhyming lines that he was saying it was some some yeah I, I can put it to right beside a black thought method man freestyle and it would fit type shit but I would say we have more record of Scarface saying something that would that you can relate to a lot more not to say Common doesn't have songs where you don't relate that you you can't relate to but Scarface, he can hit you right in the chest with some of the stuff he, he talks about. Punch you. Like, Scarface, yep. punch you in the chest. Knock but, it um, Now, as far, start, as far as stage presence, I, I got to give it a comment because I've seen Common be on stage. I see Common. He, Common is always ready to randomly say a freestyle, even if he don't got nothing on the mind or or whatever, he will think of something. And then out of the fly, he might come out with some crazy, something crazy out the top or whatever. Right. So I, I give it that. And just because Common is really, it's like you said, Common's been, Common's been in the White House. Yep. You don't get more marketable than that. <laughs> Pretty much. He's, he kind of got like the Obama endorsement, so. Yeah, like I said, just like y'all said, begrudgingly, I got to give it a comment off of metrics. Oh, boy. Two, one. Kill us in the comments. I know. I know. Comment yeah, y'all asking for me. Yeah, I, I'm ready for it. Put it in the comments. I hear it. Kill the ass in the, kill the, ass in the comments. <laughs> hey, man, I said it. Some good shots. That's about as much as uh, remorse as I'm a show for this year. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, uh, damn it. Who next? Who next? Who next? Passed up in this round. <sighs> and then we bring it to you, Pod Squad. We got Cool G Rap versus Jay. Z. I'll get mine out of the way quick, just because this is going to be my most biased moment. Jay-Z 3-0. I, I, that's my favorite rapper. I, I think he does everything greater than the other rapper, so I'm going to just go ahead and say him 3-0 right here. I, I'll argue, but I got a horrible argument. Let's see. 
we can go into the conversation and be like, well, Cool G Rap came out before Jay, so Jay could have studied Cool G Rap before he came. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I fuck with Jigga, Jigga, my nigga Jigga. That's who I grew up on. That's who, that's the, that's the only rapper I purchased, I purchased every album of. Um, lyrical, lyrical content. The lyrical content has been there on every single album. I can't say it's one song that he did not deliver on lyrically. Um, JC. Um, Even that whack ass Kingdom so Come. And yes, the biggest Jay Z fan said. Hey, he still delivered. Um, marketability. Ah. Uh, that's a silly ass question. That's Jay Z. Come on now. Stage show. Billionaire um, Jay Z. Exactly. Stage show. Come on now. That's a silly ass question. Jay Z. You might not like him. You might not relate to him now in 2022. But hey, he still. How they say the God MC. Jay Z, man, hands down. Three of them. Amen, amen. Pat, did you want to give your perspective? All right. Um, so, yeah, I want to give it the cool G rap. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I just went to the freak out for a second. <laughs> All right. Ooh, uh, you already told me you don't give a damn. If I don't give a damn, I ain't fucking with you, Pat. <laughs> all right look this is the reasons why i'm picking jay-z okay because i feel like i should at least give the reasons why pretty much yes cool g rap is lyrics is lyrical if we're going to go at lyricists um he probably probably is the architect to how a lot of people use syllables and rhymes absolutely period yeah, appreciate yeah, but Jay Z, content wise, has more things that people can relate to. Cool G rap is the epitome of gangster and street bar rap, and that's where you're stopping at. He's his days, pretty much. Way in them. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's where he's, you're stopping at. Don't get me wrong; I have the moments. That's all I want to listen to. I just want to listen to that or whatever. Well, you know, then, then sometimes you don't want to listen to that. Jay Z gives you a good medium of everything, pretty much. He, he's like, he's balanced and all around. He might not be the most rapidly rap lyrical, but he's, but he's goddamn good and goddamn close to being it pretty much he might not be um i can't even say that because over the longevity over the years or whatever his content is a lot more conscious pretty much or whatever so like he's actually grown over the years and we've seen it <laughs> lived it live with it pretty yeah, much grown up with him mm -hmm. Now, all right, so we did lyricism, stage present. You can give Jay-Z just himself in a band and it's the greatest shit in the world. Now, to this day, anytime I hear like Jay-Z with a live band, I like it better than the actual song, pretty much. Yeah, so look, it was amazing. He did a whole concert with his B-sides. Some people didn't even know what a hell a B-side was or whatever. And it was it was great. <laughs> like his B-sides are probably some, a lot of people A-sides <laughs> um, just in general, as far as their own content and music in general. And then I'm not going to say anything about marketing. I say it on almost every other good and fuckery about marketing. I'm, matter of fact, for the rest of this 
for the rest of this uh, top MCs tournament, I'm not saying shit about Jay Z's marketing because it ain't shit to say. <laughs> Jay Z is yeah, Jay Z can win market. The, yeah. whole, the yeah. only argument is maybe President Lyricism after this. Yeah. Agree. And ain't nobody popping him on marketing at all. Dirty. It Dirty. might hurt their marketing. It might hurt their marketing <laughs> if they try to top his marketing. Well, we booked it next week. Jay Z versus Karma, and here oh, we man. have it, folks. We have your top MCs before 2000 tournament as it stands. This is the bracket that you guys will be voting on next week. Over the coming week, you got Eminem versus Busta Rhymes, Ghostface Killer versus Nas, Red Man versus Tupac, and Common versus Jay Z. We got some good debates and good presentations to present next week. And next week, your vote will be counting as two. So please make sure you vote. Uh, the link will be out all week until we record again next week. So please make sure you vote. Uh, every vote counts. Every vote counts. All right. Um, so that is the top MC um, before 2000. Get your votes in. This As you can see, we've had some uh, picks there that may have gone against the grain, but you know, we, we known to do that around these parts. And uh, I see no oh, uh, yeah. better time than right now to continue that trend in faith. Let's kick Let's it off. Let's go against the grain. Let's go.